This is question 15. Here we're told that Fizzer has 10 coins in a bag. We're told that there are three £1 coins and seven 50p coins. And we're told that Fizzer takes at random three coins from the bag. We're asked to work out the probability that she takes exactly £2.50. So what we can think of, these three coins from the bag, we can think of this as being three events. And when we are dealing with more than one event in probability, a nice way to think about this is by drawing a tree diagram. So let's start by doing that. And there are two possible outcomes when she selects a coin from the bag. She can either choose a one pound coin or a 50p coin. So we can choose a one pound coin or a 50p. The probability that she chooses a one pound coin is three tenths. And then the probability that she chooses a 50p coin is seven tenths. Now, after this point is where it gets a little confusing or, or a bit more complicated. Because she's taking three coins from the bag, When, if you were to take three coins at once, that would be exactly the same as taking one coin, leaving it out of the bag, then selecting another coin, leaving that out of the bag, and then selecting a third coin and leaving that out of the bag. Now what that means is that the probabilities will change each time you remove one of the coins. So on this second event, she could choose a one pound coin first. If she were to choose a one pound coin first, again, there are two things that could happen. She could choose another one pound coin, or she could choose a 50p. Now, as I said, the probabilities will have changed if she has selected a one pound coin first, because that means that there is one fewer one pound coins in the bag. So that means that the probability that she chooses a one pound coin on her second selection is going to be two, because there's one less pound coin in the bag, out of nine because there's one less coin. So three tenths, two ninths, there are still seven 50 P's in the bag. So that means that there will be seven and there are nine in total. Now, obviously that is a bit different if she were to select a 50 P coin first, because if she were to select a 50p coin first, she could choose a one pound coin next or a 50p coin. But there would still be three one pound coins in the bag. If she's chosen a 50p first, there would be three one pound coins in the bag. But there would only be nine coins in total because she's removed one of the 50ps. Because she's chosen a 50p first, that means that there are only six coins left out of nine. So I'm just going to complete the rest of this probability tree diagram. We've got our first selection, our second selection, and then our third. So drawing this out, and again, just writing down the probabilities as we go. So on this one, we've got a pound. If she's chosen a pound and a pound, there's only one left in there and there are only eight coins left in total. So one eighth would be that last one. 50p, well this is going to be, um, there's one pound coin been taken, another pound coin's been taken, that means that there are still seven 50p's left out of the eight that are in the bag. On this one, again, we've got a one pound and a 50p. And we could, so, uh, pound coins that are left in the bag, well there's two pound coins left in the bag, um, but there are only eight in total, and there would be six 50p coins left in the bag out of eight. So carrying this on, one pound and 50p. Again, this is, these are going to be the same probabilities, there are 
two pound coins in the bag. One has been selected, and there are um, there are six fifty p's in the bag because one's been selected. Then on this last one, two fifty p's have been selected, which means that there are three pound coins still left in the bag out of the eight coins in total. And then um, on this final one for 50p, well, that's just going to be five eighths because there are only five 50p's left. So we're asked to work out the probability that she takes exactly two pounds 50. So we need the scenarios in which she has taken three coins out of the bag and it adds up to make two pounds 50. Well, we can see that this is one, a pound, a pound, and a 50p. So I'm just going to write this as uh, so this one here is two pounds fifty. We can see that this would be two, the one at the top would be too many, that would be three pounds. This one here is two pounds fifty. One pound, fifty p and a fifty p. We're not interested in this one. We weren't interested in the top one. Fifty p, a pound and a pound, that comes to two pounds fifty. Fifty p a pound and 50p that comes to the two pounds so we're not interested 50p 50p and a pound that'd come at two pounds and three 50ps would be one pound 50 so we're not interested in that one either so there are three possible ways that this could happen and we've just listed them here now all that we now have to do is take these probabilities take these probabilities so a pound a pound and a 50p and multiply them together. So 3 tenths multiplied by 2 ninths multiplied by 7 eighths. So let's work that out. The first one, so our first one is going to be, and I'm just going to write it down here, run out of space a little bit, 3 tenths multiplied by 2 ninths multiplied by 7 eighths. And so that is going to give me a probability of um, 3 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 7. So 6 times 7 for 42. And then um, 10 times 9, 90. 90 multiplied by 8, which is going to give me 720. So that first probability of getting £2.50 is 42 over 720. Now, doing this for the other ones which will add up to £2.50, I can see that the next one is 3 tenths multiplied by, so 3 tenths multiplied by 7 ninths multiplied by, I think was it 2 eighths? Let's just check, yep, 2 eighths. That's going to give me 42 over 720 as well. Um, and then the last way that we could make £2.50, so that was 42 over 720 as well. And then the last way is this way here. We could get a 50p first and then £2 coins. So 7 tenths multiplied by 3 ninths multiplied by 2 eighths. So again, 7 tenths multiplied by 3 ninths multiplied by 2 eighths. We're going to get exactly the same again, 42 over 720. Okay, so... What we've worked out is what the probability of getting £1.50 is in each of those three ways. So by choosing £2 coins and then a 50p, or a pound coin, then a 50p, then a pound coin, or a 50p, then a pound coin, then a pound coin. All that's left for me to do is to take each of these probabilities and add them together. So I've got 42 plus 42 for 84, plus another 42 for 100 and 26 over 720. So final answer for this question 
is simply going to be 126 over 720.